Uh, boss, we're into week four of uh, pre-season. Very hot one today, has <laughs> been the last couple of days. Uh, how's it been for you in the squad? It's been that. It's been, uh, I wouldn't say unbearable, but it's been extremely close to being that. We've, um, <laughs> we mentioned the word creative, didn't we, when we first come back, and it's been another, um, another curveball that's been thrown at us with the weather. Uh, when we returned here for the start of pre-season, the pitches were looking green, and the, the school had done some great work to get the pitches looking nice and ready for us to return. And then the weather that we've been thrown at has, uh, has made the surfaces extremely hard, and, and obviously then the conditions for, for pre-season difficult. But ultimately, uh, this time of year is tough, this time of year hurts, and we've just had to um, think outside the box sometimes and try to manipulate some of the sessions in order to make sure that, yeah, we're working everybody hard, but at the same time we're being sensible to not put anybody at risk. And touch wood, we've picked up one or two along the way, you know, little injuries that obviously we, we, we don't want and didn't want, but at the same time there's nothing serious so far and, and the boys are still looking strong. Mm. Well, obviously this Saturday's the first kind of competitive game, if you like, after the in-house friendly. Uh, we take on Reading under 23s. What, what kind of what are you expecting from that clash? And as a head coach, what, what do you want out of it from your players? I think there's a number of positives that come with playing against a, a team like Reading and Reading's under 23s. I'm sure there'll be some players that are uh, at the top end of that group that are looking for loans, and that's always a great angle for us to approach the game from from a wider perspective rather than just what the what the actual game looks like. For me, uh, the first couple of friendlies are to blow a few cobwebs away to get that match start to get towards that match sharpness um, so there won't be anybody playing 90 minutes or if we can help it nobody will be playing 90 minutes uh, in order to build ourselves closer towards that and then we've been doing uh, because of the time scales that we've been back we've been doing probably a bit more tactical work um, than you normally would do in, in pre-season because of the times that we've had to, had to do it so I'll be looking um, looking at that in, in terms of seeing what people are picking up, seeing if people are, are taking on board what we want in a, in a, in a more competitive environment. So mm. we're excited about the game. Um, it's another opportunity for us to experience what it's going to be like to play in an empty stadium. You know, none of us want it, but we've got to embrace it because we don't know how long we're going to be facing it for. So plenty of uh, different angles to look upon it for, but one, the one or everyone that we look at it from would be one with you know an energy and an excitement to, to play for. In terms of your squad, it's not a season where you've needed to, you know, have loads of people through the door because there is quite a settled squad here. Um, one person in particular, Rutatorio, is um, in back in training. Can you give us a bit of an update on, on Ruel? Yeah, he, well, I think we spoke and, and, and told everybody that, that Ruel would come back after missing the, the week that he did. And I think um, what we have seen from him is that he's a boy that still wants to do well, a boy that still wants to um, wants to be part of, of what we're doing at this club. So I've been impressed with his attitude. Understandably, he come back a week late and he, he wasn't at the same level as uh, a number of the players. So the first few time, days that he was in, he was running and, and trying to trying to play catch up a little bit because he'd missed out. So I think we managed that part of it well. Um, we were always and always have been consistent in the fact that we wanted Ruel to sign here. We feel that because of the way we've treated him and because of the way that he's returned, since um, since that break, that, that we've we're starting to see the player that we all know that, that, that we've got here at the club. Now it's about trying to make sure that we get him signed and, and, and make sure that he's a permanent fixture and permanent member of the of the squad. So we feel things are progressing well, and uh, and hopefully that'll continue to be the case over the next few days. And, and, and like I say, it's, it's fingers crossed that, that we get to work with him. I think it's really important that people understand that. Um, that the boy, you know, has a has a feel and a love for, for being at Leighton Orient, and it, it, you know, it was about trying to make sure that a number of different things were ad adapted and suited to make sure that um, you know that his future lies here. I don't think it all sits solely on his shoulders, um, but all I can speak for is his attitude and the way he's been since he's been back in. Um, you know, to a degree, probably on the fringes of everything because of his circumstances, but uh, his attitude's been right and. and We've continued to see him get better and better, and, and that's what he's done since he's since he's been back in. And we're driven to make sure that he continues to do that, you know, if and when he becomes a late Orient player on a on a you know, proper basis, if you like. Yeah, I see. Another a name that obviously uh, cropped up and went a bit global was when we had Yaya Torre training with us. Um, we've not seen him uh, around a training ground last week or so. Have you got an update on that? Yeah, I think we Yaya. It's a, it's a funny one. The fact that you're calling Yaya Torre <laughs> Yaya by his first name it does does still sound quite funny. Um, he was great. He was here for a, a good week or so um, and had a real good impression on everybody. And then, we'll go into too much detail, but he had some real personal issues with, 
some members of his family that meant he, he, he was missing for a week. Still in correspondence, still in constant contact and with his with his representatives and and um, on, on on his situation personally. And it's right that anybody in that situation should should focus solely on that. Um, but he hasn't been in with us for for just over a week now. We we think that we'll see him again. Um, but I think that ultimately people have got to remember that Yaya Toure came here. We were helping Yaya Toure out. It was great when he was here and he helped us immensely you know he's, he's passed on some great knowledge to to the players he's given everybody a, a little bit of a, a zip and a lift in what we, we were doing he was great for the staff because he reiterated some of our points and, and really put some substance and some meat on the bones when we were talking about certain things with what we wanted from the team so um, if we only see Yaya again for another session or, or, or not you know, it's been a great thing to have had him around us. Like I say, I think we will see him back here again, probably when the sun settles down a little bit more and it's not quite so hot for him to train. But um, like I say, that, that's where it is at the moment. But ultimately, what, you know, whatever happens, whatever the case is, he's, he's, he's got to put his family first and, and, and do right by them to, to make sure that it, you know his home life is settled before anything else. Sure. And uh, just finally, the one player we have seen through the door is Ucise. Are you looking to make any more kind of immediate additions to your team? We are certainly looking. I think what, what's important for everybody to understand, and I know that Martin and Nigel have, have, and probably Danny as well have, have mentioned it in interviews previously, is there isn't a huge amount of room for manoeuvre in the squad, you know. Um, we, we will be adding, we certainly will be adding to the group, um, but we've got to be focused on what it is, you know, there's been a real... Uh, uncertainty and upheaval from a financial perspective alone to uh, to not just our club but football in general this year so we have to bear that in mind and it's not a case of people just being able to put their hands in their pockets and bring more and more and more players in we've got a lot of players in contract and, and we see that as a, as a positive element to, to the group that we've got here so We've got to be selective, we've got to do it right, and we've got to make sure that we bring the right people in. Like I say, it won't be a, a massive um, amount of people coming through the door, but we've got a constant eye, we've got an, you know, an understanding of the people that, that we want. Are we going to be able to afford them all, and are we going to be able to bring them all in? Obviously not, but we've got you know we've, we've got our eye constantly on on what we want to try to do. But it's got to be right for everybody at the club, and, and obviously for the longer term future of the football club, that from, at least from a financial perspective, that, that everything is managed properly.